prove the function f from r to r given by f of x equals pi x minus e is a bijection and find the inverse. Let's go ahead and go through this very carefully. So proof. So to show uh, the function is a bijection, we have to show that it is an injection and it is a surjection. So injective functions are also called one-to-one -one functions and surjective functions are also called onto functions and bijections are also called one-to-one uh, -one, uh, correspondences. So if you have a one-to-one -one correspondence, you have a bijection. Okay, let's briefly recall the definitions that we need in order to do this problem. So f is one-to-one -one or injective if whenever we have f of a equal to f of b for any a, b, uh, then a is equal to b. So that's what it means for a function to be one-to-one. -one. When you have equal outputs, you will get equal inputs. F is surjective or onto if, so for all, and I need to identify F here for this, F is a function say from A to B in this definition. So for all little b in the codomain, there exists some little a in the domain such that f takes a and sends it to little b. So f of a is equal to b. It's a very, very delicate uh, definition. Oftentimes when people are learning and they don't understand, it always comes back to just, just the definitions. Okay, let's prove uh, the fact it's one to one first. So suppose f of a equals f of b for some, for some a, b or some ab, or any ab. And so what is f of a? f of a is pi a minus e. f of b is pi b minus e. You can simply add e to both sides. So we get pi a equals pi b divided by pi. So a equals b. Really simple. This shows f is 1 to 1. So now we have to show it's onto. Let me switch colors. So to show it's onto, we have to start by taking some little b in capital B. Then we have to show there's an a in capital A such that f of a is equal to b. So capital A and capital B are the same in this problem. Uh, they're both a set of real numbers. So before I write the proof for this, I'm going to come to the side over here and just do some scratch work. So this is not part of the proof. This is how we figure it out. Uh, this was not needed for the injectivity part because it was pretty straightforward. Uh, I can't do this part in my head, though. I'm, I can't come up with a little a. So we want to show f of a is equal to f of b. So you write down what you want to show. We're allowed to do that because this is not the proof. This is the scratch work. f of a is pi a minus e, and that's equal to b. And again, we want to find little a, right? We need to show there exists an a. So we'll add e to both sides. That gives us pi a equals b plus e. Then we can um, divide by pi. So a is equal to b plus e over pi. That's certainly a real number. Okay, let's go to our proof now and you'll see how this works. So we're carefully going to satisfy this definition so we'll start by taking a B in capital B. So take any little b in capital B, which is the set of real numbers. Now we need to show there exists an A. So then out of thin air, we produce A. Well, not out of thin air, out of our scratch work. But oftentimes when you read textbooks, they just show you this step. They say A is equal to B plus E over pi. But they never show you how to get it. So this is how you get it. It's the scratch work. Notice it's not part of the proof. Is a real number? So we should specify that it makes sense because uh, we have to show it's in capital A, which is this. This is our capital A. This is our capital B. Then we just have to make sure f of a equals f of b. So f of a is equal to pi a minus e. That's equal to pi. Well, a is b plus e over pi. And that's minus e. 
and the pi's cancel. Oh, this is the best part. B plus E minus E, which is equal to B. So then F of A is equal to F of B, is equal to B. So we took any B in capital B, we showed there exists an A in capital A, such that F of A equals B. Same thing it says here for all B in capital B, there exists an A in capital A, such that F of A is equal to B. Thus, F is on to. So to show it's a bijection, we just have to say it's one to one and on to, so it's bijective. So we just have to make a statement about it. So since F is one to one and on to, it is a bijection. So we've showed uh, it's a bijection. To find the inverse, it's not so bad. Let's do that. So to find the inverse, that completes the proof. So I'll end the proof part of this question. Uh, f of x is equal to pi x minus e. So your f of x is y, so y equals pi x minus e. So a function and its inverse undo each other. So a functions take x to y, the inverses take y back to x. So the way to find the inverse, uh, maybe you've seen this before, is your first step, if you want a number of steps, is you identify the function as your y. The second step is to realize that x becomes y and y becomes x. So x equals pi y minus e. If you look at the graph of a function and its inverse, it's basically you're swapping the x and y coordinates. So you're allowed to do this when you're looking for inverse functions. And three, uh, solve for y. So we'll add e. So we get x plus e equals pi y. And then just divide by pi. We get y equals x plus e over pi. That's the inverse function. So the last thing to do is rename it. Our inverse function is x plus e over pi. And there's our inverse. So step one when finding the inverse, call it y. Step two, switch x and y. Step three, solve for y. Step four, give it a name. Uh, usually you can do this uh, for most most of the questions. I hope this video has been helpful. Oh, uh, and just maybe a quick, quick recap. So just one more time. So to prove it's a bijection, you have to show it is one to one and also on to. And so it's extremely important to know the definition of one to one and know the definition of on to. And just remember, any time um, that you get stuck in these problems and where you're having an issue, go go back to the definitions. It's the definitions that will lead you um, to the correct answer. I hope this video has been helpful.